Dow Jones tumbled again today, closing down 338 points for the day and 5% for the week. But it isn't just the market that has some people worrying in these days of counting every dollar. Lots of people are worrying about their timeshare investments. 4.7 million people have these often wonderful vacation retreats that can turn into terrible financial headaches. It was a $10.6 billion industry last year, and as Vicki Mabry discovered, once you get timeshare, it's often not easy to get rid of it. Ah, timeshares. Who hasn't dreamed of owning a little slice of paradise for one week a year for the rest of your life? Our family used to take vacations with my Aunt Liz to her timeshares, until one day a few months ago, Aunt Liz called to report that her piece of paradise had suddenly become a financial purgatory. Her maintenance fees, once so reasonable, had crept up to $2,500 a year, and she couldn't get out of her contract. So I started researching how to sell this asset she thought was so valuable and discovered it was worth almost nothing. The search led me to Brian Rogers, who runs the Timeshare Users Group, or TUG, website. Both Brian and Arda, the group representing resort developers, told me that timeshares should not be bought as a financial investment. The value is in the enjoyment you get from them. But that's it. There are still people who love their timeshares. Absolutely. There are people who are they're very happy timeshare owners. Absolutely. It's not that people are unhappy with timeshares. They find out later down the road that when they try to sell it, that their timeshare is worth next to nothing. Shocked, I blogged about it and found plenty of people with timeshare nightmares. One of them was Nancy Boggs, the cousin of a cousin who told us she'd been tempted and gave in. Well, unfortunately, I don't know if you know this, but I bought two. Not once, but twice. So the first one that I bought, I think it was like 11500 the one in Maui. You're on vacation. You know, what do you think came over you in that week? The glory of relaxation is what came over me. I mean, I was just, it was just such a wonderful, beautiful place. Um, I was tired, you know, I worked so hard. And, and just to have an experience in a beautiful place with palm trees and wonderful weather and nice people, and it was just something I never wanted to end. The human tendency to be lulled by the waves and the sand and the sunsets into wanting that endless vacation is what rakes in billions of dollars each year for the timeshare industry. They bring you into this room and there's lots of balloons and it's like a big party atmosphere. And then you hear bells ringing in the background and hon horns honking and uh, people screaming and screaming and delightful screams. But I mean, happy screams, but they're like, you know, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so just invested in the happiness of their family. She belatedly realized it was pretty impractical to get the family together to make an annual pilgrimage from the Midwest to Hawaii. But then she fell in love again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, glorious Cancun. With Cancun. You wrote them a check for, yes, for the $13,500? <laughs> yes, unfortunately. I, re I did. And again, then how much was the maintenance? It was a couple hundred dollars a month until there was a hurricane. A hurricane that she says damaged the timeshare so much she couldn't go there. But the company charged a special assessment. Once the hurricane came, then it went from like 150, something like that, to like $500 a month. Yeah. You're kidding. It was a month? A month. A month, because they had to rebuild everything. It was a huge <laughs> place. And then you can't even use it. Can't use it while, it while they're rebuilding, right. And even, even if there were other places that you could use, you don't know what the place is like. And so it just turned out to be a horrible waste of my money. I just, I, I said, you know, I would have done just as well to just take a stack of money and just light a match to it. Nancy tried to give her timeshare to a charity, but they didn't want it. Finally, she paid an agency to take it off her hands. Brian Rogers says about half of Tug's 30,000 members join so they can sell their timeshare. It's a rude awakening. They discover that it's extremely, extremely hard to sell a timeshare, and that's because there are so many more sellers than buyers. 
You can find secondhand timeshares all over the internet. There are hundreds on tug sites and more on eBay. One of the big selling points is that not only do you have this investment for the rest of your life, but you can pass it on to your heirs. The double-edged sword is, what if your heirs don't want it? A lot of these are deeded properties. It's just like buying a house. So when you get this deed, it goes into your family. Uh, if you were to pass away and your children were to inherit your estate, that is part of your estate. Becky Greiber's parents love their place at Christmas Mountain in the Wisconsin Dells, but now they're in their 80s and don't go as often. They gave Becky that part of her inheritance early. I think it was very nice of them to offer it to us, and I know that it was a headache for them, so I'm glad to take it over for them. But it really has been stressful trying to figure out how to sell it. Turn it into cash. Call timeshares only. We got rid of those maintenance fees. There are companies who advertise all over late-night TV and the Internet who will sell your unwanted timeshare for you. Becky says as soon as word got out, she was inundated with offers from these kinds of firms, offering to sell her timeshare for her, if she'd pay them hundreds of dollars up front. I got a call just today um, asking if I had a timeshare for sale, and I said I did. And I said, um, but I'm not willing to pay any money up front. I'm only interested in paying commission after I sell the property, and she hung up. But the other thing is you've got to know that when you buy this, you are buying it forever. That's exactly right. When you and you don't know what the fees are going to be 10 years from the time of purchase. That's exactly right. That's why you can never, ever have enough information about what you're about to purchase versus just going in and getting caught up in the moment, signing your name to the dotted line and being stuck with that piece of paper, that contract for the rest of your life. And your children's life. And your children's life. Absolutely. This is Vicki Mabry for Nightline on a beautiful beach just before sunset in St. Augustine, Florida.